In this lesson, we're going to look at evaluating some more variable expressions. Um, now, we've spoken about this before in previous videos, but when we are plugging negative numbers in for variables, one of the things we usually want to do is put those negative numbers in parentheses. And this first example uh, is definitely no exception. So when I plug negative 4 in for m, I need that negative 4 to be in parentheses when I square it because this expression up here tells us to square whatever m is. Well, if negative 4 is what m is, I need to indicate that that number should be squared. And so, therefore, that negative needs to be in parentheses, and then the square is outside to indicate that. Same thing with p cubed. Negative 2 should be in parentheses, and so should negative 7. So we have uh, three different um, exponential expressions to take care of here right off the bat. So we'll do a little scratch work on the side here. Negative 4 squared. It doesn't hurt to remind ourselves that this is just negative 4 times itself, which gives us a positive 16. Um, negative 2 cubed means we're going to take negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Now notice there are three negatives being multiplied together or an odd number, and so that's always going to give us a negative answer. And 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And then finally, my negative 7 squared is negative 7 times itself, which is positive 49. And so in the next step here, I have 16 divided by negative 8 minus positive 49. Now out of what's left here, uh, we know division comes before subtraction, so 16 divided by negative 8 is negative 2, and then we have our minus 49. And then whenever we're subtracting integers, it's a good idea to turn that subtraction sign into adding the opposite. So cleaning this up, we end up with negative 2 plus negative 49. The signs are the same, so we know we're adding. And so we end up with 51, but since both numbers are negative, the answer is negative 51. Now a quick reminder, whenever you're doing these types of problems, remember we want kind of two parts to our work. We want the main body of our work, which is what we have over here on the left, where we're rewriting everything that we haven't changed in each step. And then over here we have our scratch work. And so really try to show all the detail of each step, and then any scratch work you need to do, keep that separate from the rest of the problem. All right, so let's take a look at this second example. So in this second example, we have some absolute values involved. And again, we we'll want to follow this rule of put the negative numbers in parentheses. Now this negative 8 that's taking the place of x, there's two reasons I want parentheses here. One is to kind of protect this negative and make sure that it doesn't look like we're taking 7 minus 8. And the other reason is parentheses um, indicate multiplication, and we know that that's what we want to do. We're going to subtract y, which is negative 9, which I also need parentheses around. And then we're going to add... Ne uh, Negative, the absolute value of negative 4 times negative 5. And again, I'll use parentheses with my negative 5. Now one thing to really try and do, and I've done a decent job here, but I suppose I could do it a little better, um, is really emphasize your absolute value bars by making them taller than your numbers. And the reason for that is um, you wouldn't want to mistake this absolute value bar for a 1 and think that you have negative 17 right here. If you make the absolute value bar really big, then it's clear um, that that's an absolute value bar and not a 1. So remember, absolute value bars are parentheses, essentially, in and of themselves. They're grouping symbols. And so we need to take care of the stuff inside of the absolute value bars before we actually take the absolute value. So first thing here, I'm going to bring this negative um, straight down. There's my absolute value bar, and of course I've got 
multiplication and subtraction. We know by now, hopefully, that multiplication comes before subtraction, so I'll multiply those first. And now I've got negative 4 times negative 5. Um, that's the only thing to do in those absolute value bars, and so that's, of course, a positive 20. Now, the absolute value of 20 is ready for me to take the absolute value of it, but I'm going to wait until the other absolute value is ready. So um, that absolute value of 20 will just hold tight and kind of follow down through the steps. Now, inside of this of these absolute value bars we can see we have subtraction of integers so again probably a good idea to cross the line change the sign turn that to an addition problem so this is negative 56 plus 9 in the absolute value bars and negative 56 plus 9 I know I'm subtracting the two absolute values. So we end up with 47, but because the negative's on the larger absolute value, that's a negative 47. So now we're in a position where we can actually take our absolute values. So the absolute value of negative 47 is just 47. But understand that this negative outside of the absolute value needs to come down to the next step. So we end up with negative 47 plus, and then the absolute value of 20 is, of course, 20. And so again, we have two different signs, so we're going to subtract our absolute values. So we get a difference of 27, but of course the answer is negative 27 here.